Hey, kid. Allo? I bet you thought I'd give you some switch skills. Well, I mean, it would have been nice. Okay, then I will. What? Oh, sweet! And there's more where that came from. There are? Yeah. Well, then how do I get them? Well, how should I know? This... Uh, what? Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, one of the most interesting parts of the gameplay mechanics in base Monster Hunter Rise was the addition of switch skills, the ability to switch out a part of your moveset for something completely different while at the base, allowing you to treat each hunt differently and personalize your playstyle just a little bit, even in comparison to other people using the same weapon. Unfortunately, more often than not, it just led to one of them being better than the other, and people just sort of never changing. Now, however, we have the ability to swap back and forth between two sets of switch skills mid-hunt. And on top of that, we also have three more switch skills for each weapon, essentially doubling the amount of flexibility available. Today is all about the new switch skills, and on that note, if you want more Sunbreak info, tips, tricks, and just general enjoyment of the expansion itself, we're going to be doing our best to be an absolute hub of Sunbreak goodness here on the channel, so subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to stay in the loop. Back on the switch skills, though, right at the start of your Master Rank journey upon first visiting Elgato. Outpost, Master Arlo will want to have a chat with you that results in talking about the switch skill swap system. And along with that, you will unlock one new switch skill for every weapon in the game. These are, in smithy weapon order, Surge Slash Combo, a way to do three separate angles of attack with your greatsword. This removes the Charge Slash option from a draw attack, and instead lets you do a speedy three-hit combo before landing in your normal Stage 2 Strong Charge Slash. What makes this special is you can combo any version of Triangle, Circle, or Triangle and Circle together for a string of three hits from different angles, all leading you back into your regular charge attack combo at the end. Sacred Sheath Combo For Longsword, this is quite interesting. It replaces your special sheath stance and your EI attacks that follow them with a slow sheathing power move. If you are hit while sheathing the weapon, you will lose a level of spirit gauge. If you release the button right before the attack connects, however, you will instead perform a counter, filling your bar instantly and letting you combo into the final move of your spirit combo to upgrade your gauge. Once you have red gauge, you get the full power version of this, and then when you fully sheathe your weapon using this move, it will have two charge levels to increase the damage of the following attack. You can dash around and reposition while fully sheathed, then charged, and when you release the attack, it will be a super high damage three hit combo that can also cancel the damage of an incoming attack if timed right, though this does not count as a counter. Twin Blade Combo. Replacing the attack at the end of your triangle combo that hits with both the sword and the shield, this gives you an attack that hits twice with the sword instead, dealing a bit more damage and coming out just a touch faster. It's quite simple, but also reasonably effective to boot. Slide Slash Combo. This move replaces your round slash and turn slash moves with dual blades, which are just slight repositioning part of your dual blade combos, with a full-on dash that you can insert at any point with attacks as a part of it, allowing you to fly around the battlefield in the direction of your choice with just a flick of the stick after pretty much any attack in your combos. This can be a bit unwieldy while you get used to it, but once you get the hang of it, it just lets you move around like crazy without ever having the need to stop hitting your opponent. I will never stop. Shield Tackle. This replaces your very slight forward hop guard dash with a forward momentum attack that also lets you guard while in motion, ending with a shield bop that deals stun damage and setting you up for your regular thrusting combos. While this isn't the flashiest of moves, I know that Lance players will learn to love this one once they adjust to it. It just lets you be even more aggressive with the same general playstyle, more damage for doing the things that you already want to do. Erupting Cannon. This move replaces your Worm Stake Cannon with a move that just explodes one time instead of embedding a stake in your enemy, and this explosion has a result of making your melee attacks deal significantly more damage for a decent length of time after the fact. Of course, as this is a power-up switch skill, this means that you can mess around with the switch skill swap mechanic to sort of get the best of both worlds, but this will definitely see a lot of use. Spinning Bludgeon Charge This swap is a really cool change to the way that you think about hammer gameplay. It takes the level 3 yellow mode charged attack and lets you charge while using it. That may sound a little bit confusing, but it makes more sense when you see it on screen. When you use the spinning bludgeon move, hold down the right trigger again and you will glow blue. If you then initiate a stance change at the end of the attack, you will immediately be at the level 3 charge of your blue mode of choice. This allows for some nasty hit and run tactics, but also makes hammer weirdly more usable with element and also status, giving you more combos with lots of hits involved. Swing Combo. This hunting horn combo switches up your base moveset a little bit, allowing you to perform a double swing either to the right or to the left and reposition 
position mid-combo, rather than being somewhat static once your combo starts. The time it takes to launch out to the side after hitting the button is a little bit longer than I'd like personally, and makes it a bit odd to use, but I'm sure once we get used to it, the Hunting Horn users will appreciate at least having this as an option, especially in a world where we can turn it on and off mid-hunt like it's nothing. Two-Staged Morph Slash Combo This is a move that changes the way that the Switch Axe morphs out of Wild Swing, giving it the ability to follow up morphing to Sword Mode by immediately morphing back out to Axe Mode. The Sword Mode, when entered from this combat, does a bit more damage, and the Axe Mode, when reverted to through this combo, charges your Sword Gauge up a little bit faster. It is a bit of an odd one, but definitely a fun one as well. File Follow-Up Firing Pin This is a power-up mode that is a bit more complex than most of the others I've mentioned so far. When in Elemental Boost, your Shield Thrust will leave a patch of silk on your enemy, and in Sword Boost mode, your Sword Attacks will do the same. After a short period of time, these will just disappear, but if you hit the silk with an Axe Mode attack, they will explode for an extra pop of damage. It just keeps popping off! As well, it extends the duration of your Elemental Boost mode whenever one of these pops. In other words, if you use this right, you will never have to rebuff your shield during a hunt, and will also gain a load of bonus damage as well. Kinsect Slash This one is a little bit complex, replacing your bouncing aerial combo move with a move that fires both yourself and your Kinsect forwards, absorbing an extract from the point you connect with and then launching you back up into the air. If you absorb a red extract, you will not be able to absorb more extracts from this move during this combo, but you will gain access to Enhanced Insect Spiker, a new triangle move that will deal extra damage. Critical Firepower This switch skill simply changes the critical distance for most types of ammo for the light bow gun, raising your damage potential a fair amount while also increasing the recoil of shots fired in this way. Not a complex switch skill, but one that will definitely be used by light bow gun players. Crouching Shot This unlocks a whole new firing style for heavy bow gun, turning it into a burst fire weapon instead of a single shot weapon or a charged firing weapon, putting you in a crouch stance that you can fire a decent sized barrage of shots from before your barrel overheats, the amount of shots depending on the type of ammo, making it unable to be fired in this way until it cools down. This adds a sort of burst fire management to your gameplay, but also gives you a surprising amount of extra damage if you can manage it effectively. This rapid firing does eat into your overall ammo, but ignores your clip count itself while firing, allowing you to just sort of keep the onslaught going as much as physically possible. Stake Thrust This switch skill replaces the bow's normal melee option with the ability to stick a stake in your enemy in whatever part it connects with, which makes any arrows that hit the spot afterwards deal extra damage, and thus giving you even more of a reason to be accurate with your shots. Stay on target! And those are all of the switch skills that you'll get immediately, but that's still only one third of the overall new switch skills, so buckle up because there's a whole lot more to come. At this point you may be wondering, where do I get the next switch skills from? In Base Rise, all of the follow-up unlocks were a bit hard to work out. One of them came from crafting a certain number of weapons in each tree. One of them came from quests that you unlocked in High Rank. Well, in Sunbreak, all of your supplementary switch skills come from one place. You won't be told when this will happen, and if you're like me, you're probably wondering what you've done wrong when you get to Master Rank 4 and haven't heard a single word about more switch skills since the start of the game. Well, don't worry. After the first set of urgent quests in Master Rank 4, Master Itsushi will once again want to talk to you, and at this point, after hours of worrying that you've missed something, you'll just be straight up handed the remaining 28 switch skills all at once. And so with this very easy unlock now understood by all of us, let's talk about every single thing you gain access to from that point. Once again, again in smithy order. Strong Arm Stance. That's right, Great Sword has a parry! This works significantly better without the first new Switch Skill Surge Slash Combo, as using the parry with Surge Slash Combo just pushes you forward in the Surge Slash Combo itself. However, if you use this parry while charging a basic Charge Slash, it will put you immediately into the True Charge Slash or Rage Slash animation at full charge level, along with giving that attack a significant damage bump over just using it normally. In essence, this is the new bread and butter of raw Great Sword combat. It is fun, and it is ungodly levels of strong. Backslide. This one replaces power sheaths for great swords and is another evasive option. Losing the power up is hard to justify, and it doesn't exactly make it worth it either, as all backslide does is reposition you without losing your charge level or position within the combo. It isn't necessarily bad, but more often than not, if you have to reposition in the middle anyways with great sword, it tends to be better to start fresh, especially when you would use this in these same situations that you would use strong arm stance. In a moment when you are attacked, 
attacking and about to be hit by your opponent. Tempered Spirit Blade. This longsword silk bind replaces Sakura Slash and Soaring Kick, essentially telling you that your spending of Spirit Gauge bars should be done through the Sacred Sheath combo, the new switch skill that we talked about earlier, making this a very strong combination together. This is just a fast recharging single wire bug cost silk bind that immediately counters an attack in front of you, fills your spirit bar, and raises your spirit gauge by one. Harvest Moon. This is a fun and unique little silk bind that puts a reasonably large circle around you when you activate it, and from then, anytime you counter an attack within the circle, it will be given an extra few hits, dependent on the way your blade slices through your enemy. This replaces the old two wire bug counter silk bind, which saw very little use outside of wake up hits, making it very much a usable option. Destroyer Oil. This one is an oil for sword and shield, meaning it is a power up, and it is listed as making monsters flinch more easily. That is a bit of a difficult thing to quantify properly, but essentially, this is just something that you want to have on one of your switch kill scrolls. Activate it, then switch scrolls, and use a different silk bind while the power up is active in the background. Shield Bash. This is an interesting one to me. It is sort of a parry, but not quite as much as your other parry, and that you can only block an attack with it if you're in the second stage of the movement, and after which you can just launch off into your regular flurry of sword and shield attacks. You don't really gain anything from blocking stuff with it, so overall I'd look at this more as a large gap closer than anything else. I want to be close to you. Spiral Slash. This one is really cool. It basically turns you into human drill as you really dig into one part of the monster with your dual blades, dealing a ton of individual instances of damage. And to make it interesting, you can use this one while midair too, allowing you to focus in on parts like the wings of a flying monster or something like that. Iron Shine Silk. And here we have the Silk Bind that will be single-handedly responsible for dual blades never running out of sharpness ever again. This is another one of those long-term power-up silk binds. Upon initial activation, it restores a good amount of sharpness to your bar. And then for the duration that it is active, it will restore a chunk of sharpness every time you evade through an attack, whether it be through the pure iframes of rolling, or even if you swap switch skill scrolls, as you probably should, and use your shrouded vault counterattack to push through an attack. Now that will also regain your sharpness, making you never really in danger of needing to use a whetstone again. Skyward Thrust. This one is relatively reminiscent of an insect glaive move, but simply it, it thrusts you into the air, and then you slam down with a spiral thrust that does a bunch of instances of damage, essentially making this great for status or element application, but in general, it's just freaking awesome looking, which makes it hard not to like in the first place. This replaces the high-powered lance counter silk bind that powers up your weapon, so basically it depends if you want to do a more reactive playstyle or a more proactive playstyle, or you can obviously just swap between them back and forth mid-hunt, as many weapons will want to learn to do. Sheathing Retreat. This one is quite simply your get out of jail free card, a backwards evade that quickly sheathes your weapon. It simply exists to let you get out of a situation you don't want to be in and let you have the freedom of sheathed movement speed immediately afterwards. Bullet Barrage. This move starts by venting out the heat of your gun lance as well as full reloading the weapon. Then it fires a blast dash forwards and then unloads everything in the weapon at the monster in front of you, including your worm stake or erupting cannon, depending on what you have selected. If you have a Erupting Cannon on, this will also activate the buff to melee damage, which is quite the neat double up combo as well. Reverse Blast. This Silkbind replacement is an evasive maneuver that launches you backwards with your own shell, dealing damage to any monster in front of you and sending you far away from the battle in case of immediate danger. This is an interesting move that will definitely have some use for some people, but the other two switch skills for Gunlance are a bit better in my opinion. Keeping Sway. This Silkbind gives you a quick evade option that keeps your charge level for hammer, and while it is a reasonably good thing to have, I think it's sort of already made obsolete by the silk bind it would otherwise replace, Dash Breaker. Dash Breaker keeps your current charge level while being an offensive move in its own right, as well as having a hyper armor component. Keeping Sway is simply an evasive option that keeps your charge level. I can see how it would be useful in situations where you either don't want the forward momentum, or if you are afraid of the damage even through hyper armor, but generally speaking I think with a good player behind the controls, Dash Breaker is sort of just better. Impact Burst. Here we go again with the Power Up Silk Binds. This is one of those things that absolutely motivates you to switch skill swap on the hunt. When activated, it makes every attack that you hit with have a secondary pop of damage, making things like Spinning Bludgeon even stronger as it also hits a lot from one charge attack, especially stacking with the new charge switch skill that lets you combo it into level 3 charge attack or your blue mode for even more hits in the same combo string. Essentially, this just gives you a benefit to hitting more often with the attacks that you generally already wanted to hit with, and the ability to switch your switch skill scroll means that you won't even really 
be losing Impact Crater, simply putting it aside for a single moment in order to power it up for later. ¿Por qué no las dos? Sonic Bloom, and this is where my baby the hunting horn has an absolutely lovely new thing going on. I may talk a little bit more about this than the other one, but that's because the hunting horn is my main. I've used it my whole journey with Sunbreak so far, and let me tell you this. Sonic Bloom is an egg of frickin' destruction. It replaces Earthshaker, which I thought I would never want to replace, but it does a touch less damage than Earthshaker on average, but what it does and lets you do are ridiculous. When you use the skill, you put a Sonic Bloom down on the floor under you. This stays attached to you by a piece of silk, and every time you play a song with your hunting horn, it will grow. On the third song played, it will explode for a massive chunk of damage dealt directly to the head of your enemy. This chunk of damage has a high stun value and extra part break damage, as well as ignoring hit zones. And of course, the most ridiculous part of this is how it functions. If you are hit while putting it on the floor, as long as it isn't a millisecond after hitting the button, it will still go down and exist. If you play a song nowhere near the monster, it will still affect the sonic bloom. The only requirement of this dealing its maximum damage is for the monster to be in range of the explosion when it happens. As I said, the bloom is triggered by three melody effects taking place, which means it is also instantly popped by your magnificent trio combo, and it has a unique interaction of instantly popping with the infernal melody song being played as well. Generally speaking, the playstyle revolving around this silk bind is you put down the bloom, play your songs as quickly as possible in the given situation while also hitting the monster, you make the bloom pop, and then put a new one down and repeat. It's just freaking awesome. I love it. Silkbind Shockwave. This third hunting horn switch skill is once again impeccable in my mind. What it does is add a tiny little shockwave to every single attack you use after using the power up. The thing is, the animation itself has ridiculous hyper armor without moving you around much, and the recovery time on its wire bug usage is insanely quick. So while most power up moves I would recommend switching off of to take advantage of what they replace, this one I think you should just keep around 100% of the time. It is slightly less offensive than slide beat, but it more than makes up for it by being on-command mega hyper armor that combos easily into your infernal melody song. The power-up itself is just fantastic for hunting horn, especially as we already have shockwave damage as part of our moveset. This just adds more shockwaves and further incentivizes the concept of just attacking the monster regardless of what part is in front of you. Obviously you want to hit the weakest parts, but now you have multiple parts of your damage that simply ignore hit zones. Add that onto the sonic bloom popping purely by how fast you can play songs, and you are being heavily pushed to just whack the monster in whatever part it has in front of you as often as possible. Wire Step. This silk bind simply lets you reposition while in axe mode, taking evasion boosting skills into account, and you can choose whether you want to go left or right. It's not the fanciest skill, and given the slot that it fills, it has genuinely good damage options as well. I don't imagine this will see a massive amount of use, honestly. Elemental Burst Counter. That's right, counter. Switch Axe gets a counter, and it is absolutely lovely. This attack lets you enter a stance and ready an attack, and if you launch it off just as the attack connects with you, you'll do an extra strong attack and the switch axe will also enter amped state. Essentially, this is a counter that lets you skip a lot of the powering up stage, just making switch axe even faster as a weapon. Ready Stance. This is a replacement for the counter silk bind that is essentially another counter. The main difference being this one lets you exit into both sword or axe mode depending on what you want to do in the situation at hand. The options you have to follow up with depend on the level of knockback the attack has attributed to it, so you can either exit with something as small as an elemental axe swing, or as big as an amped elemental discharge. Air Dash. This is both a gap closer and an evade depending on how you use it, firing you pretty much straight up into the air when you use it with some forward momentum, from which you can either do a downward axe slam or a file burst to push you backwards away from the fight. It's not bad, but it's not great really either. Awakened Kinsect Attack. This, again, like the previous Insect Glaive edition, is a bit complex, but the simplest way to put it is you throw your Kinsect at the monster like a baseball, dealing a big pop of damage and consuming all of your extracts. Then you jump in yourself, absorb more extracts from the point it connected with, and then you also enter the Vaulting Dance attack. A lot of things happen when you press that button, but essentially this is a way to turn the extracts into a build and spend system with a damaging payoff. Kinsect Glide. This is just a really cool evasive maneuver that lets you sort of reset your aerial combo more than anything else. While jumping off of your Kinsect, you regenerate a bit of stamina, and also you're allowed to do any of your aerial moves from this position. Essentially, it just augments your aerial combat ability in an interesting way. Wyvern Counter. 
This is an evasive silk bind with a bit of extra punch to it. The damage it deals isn't insane, but if you time it right, it can fully just destroy projectiles. It can cause monsters to flinch. It is actually quite impressive, even if it doesn't appear that way at face value. Mech silk bind shot. If we're talking face value, this is the one that is immediately notable for light bowgun. This loads your weapon with silk bind ammo, letting you fire it off full auto like an assault rifle until you've used all the ammo up. If a shot hits the same place that a silk shot hit, it will deal bonus silk bind and part break damage. Essentially, this just creates a little bonus mini game where you get to shoot fast and have fun and then aim for the same parts afterwards. Rising Moon. This thing is sort of crazy compared to what pretty much every other weapon gets. It puts a circle in front of you and anytime ammo passes through the circle, it speeds up. The main thing this does is increase the range of your ammo before it dissipates, though it can also have a negative effect on certain ammo. And for those ammo, what you actually want is Setting Sun. This silk bind has the exact reverse effect of the last one. It puts a circle in front of you that slows down any ammo sent through it. You may wonder what positive this would have, but what it actually does is make things like piercing ammo gain extra ticks of damage as it progresses through the monster. Heavy Bowgun gets straight up time bending powers that you can use depending on the type of ammo you are focusing on, and it's extremely badass, though my brain is maybe a little bit too smooth to understand all of its uses immediately myself. A clock. We don't have that in America. Butcher's Bind. This bow silk bind fires off an arrow wrapped in silk and then gives you a second arrow yourself. If you hit the same exact spot as the first arrow, it will explode for an extra pop of damage. If you miss, it will do nothing special. Essentially, this just adds on to the whole aim for one spot, hit the one spot mentality they seem to want bow to have. Bolt Boost. This gives you a new addition to the bow called Super Critical Range while it is active, making you do extra damage for being in the exact perfect space of distance from the monster. Essentially, if you combine these with the other new bow switch skills, they just sort of wanted you to stay extremely accurate from a very specific distance, which actually is a really cool way to reward bow as a weapon with more damage in my personal opinion. And with that, we have now covered every single new switch skill in Sunbreak, all 42 of them, because by god when Capcom feels like given, they just given, given, given. Oh man, I could really use a glass of water. I hope you have all enjoyed this showcase of all the new switch skills and descriptions of how they work work, as well as the answer to the question of where they all come from. I look forward to seeing you all out there on your sunbreak journey, enjoying your new attacks and new monsters and new maps and just the excitement of it all. Like if you like the video, subscribe and the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye